It is Sunday night. We're talking baseball. We're talking fab. We're talking week four. We're doing all kinds of baseball talk. All coming up next on the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Happy Sunday night. As always, everybody, welcome to the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I am Scott Jensen, joined as always on Sunday nights by Jeff Erickson. We got a lot to talk about uh, tonight, Jeff. A lot going on, uh, a lot of fun baseball. Uh, our Reds had a sweep this weekend. Is that right? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Wow. Our Reds did. I well, love it. I'm, I'm glad that you're back to being our, our Reds. Well, uh, you, you, sweep the white, you sweep the White Sox. That's high level stuff here, Jeff. Yes, yes. Well, you know, we had to get while well, the getting's good before Tommy Pham joined. So, uh, yeah, uh, it it's yeah they're they're a really really awful ball club, um, and I feel they were bad, bad but, before like yeah. their two three and four hitters all got hurt too. Yeah, exactly. And like for long term too, it's uh, it's rough. Uh, yeah, we were talking about it before, and I looked at the standings. I'm like, they're, I knew they're bad. I didn't know they were. There. I didn't know they're quite two and thirteen bad in Chicago. Yeah, that explains why uh, Michael Kopech does not have uh, nine or uh, you know nine or ten saves already. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it's just a robbery. <laughs> Hard to get saves when you have two wins. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, let's jump in. We're going to talk a lot of fab. We'll preview week four. But uh, as always, uh, with this uh, with this time or the, this time of year and also as this season special, we'll talk some injuries and some kind of big news on, on the top. Uh, I think the biggest one of the weekend was Bobby Miller, uh, Dodgers pitcher who, you know, was popular in drafts, uh, fourth round pick. Went to the aisle with shoulder inflammation. I think when I first saw that, I'm like, oh, here we go. I assume that, uh, you know. My season's over. It's over. But uh, got some positive news. Um, no structural damage in his MRI. Um, it sounds like he's going to start a throwing program next week. Uh, I'm very. I'm always pessimistic on shoulders or elbows or pitchers, but it seems like maybe this is not quite as bad as it sounded like on on Saturday. Yeah, uh, we'll see about that. I, I, I'm still a little skeptical. The fact that they immediately went to MR, to the MRI. Makes me concerned. Uh, the guy guy throws so hard, uh, and his velocity is down ever so slightly this year. He looks so good in that first start. I had so much FOMO, Scott. I don't have any Bobby Miller this year, and I feel I was like, even in his second start, which is against the Cubs, which is a bad one. I said, even though despite this start, I still have FOMO regarding him. Oof, tough, tough one to lose him. But I mean, the Dodgers are kind of sort of built for this, so they'll they'll be able to maintain. I mean, Ryan Yarbrough can slip in and cover for a while. Probably, yeah. uh, probably mix and they get Walker Bueller back in about 10 days, so they'll be okay. Uh, don't cry for yeah. the Dodgers, yeah, they're still going to be fine. Where they 11 and seven, wherever they are, but the Cap- Gavin Stone looked really good yesterday. He was, uh, he was really dealing yeah. early, a little bump in the sixth inning, but uh, he looked good. I went to the Dodgers game on Friday night, uh, it was a fun game, eight seven and eight home runs. Uh, you got to see Otani and Betts Homer, uh, Machado and Tatis. It was, uh, it's a fun night at the ballpark. At the, the, the Dodgers Padres crowds are good. They uh, those teams do not like each other very much. No, no, you missed out on yesterday where there was a controversy over nothing. That was the worst bench clearing incident I've ever seen. I think. I mean, when Manny Machado is like out there yapping, but carrying the sunflower seeds with him. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like Profar was mad because they kind of threw a pitch inside. Like it was, it was like barrel. It was like a normal inside pitch at armpit level. And, and like yes, someone stone throws hard and he was throwing a perfect game at the time. Yeah. So I and guess. someone did, did Profar try and bunt? Is that what it like kind of started out as? I don't know what it was, but I don't uh, know about that, but yeah, you could tell when even the relief pitchers, you could tell they were really annoyed. They had to run in from the bullpen because it was so much about nothing, but you can't just sit there and watch. So it was, uh, it was yep. fun, but yeah. So I think the Miller stuff, I mean, he's going to be out for a while, but uh, I think it's, is not a, does not sound like a super long-term thing. Any kind of pitcher, you know, you're, you're dealing with some long terms. They got to ramp back up again. Um, but uh, so that's uh, that's a bummer. But uh, at least the news has been fairly positive. I think that you know, fantasy wise, it's good. But um, also, Bobby Miller is really fun to watch. And as uh, someone who lives in LA, going to games and watching Bobby Miller pitch is fun. Watching yep. pitch on TV is fun. Uh, Raphael Devers, Jeff uh, missed uh, all last four games for a sore shoulder. Um, I'm officially at the point where this is concerning to me. He missed uh, missed a game earlier in the, like the second or third game of the year. He's like, oh, I've been dealing with the spring training, but uh, you know, I always deal with it. It's fine. And then four games in a row. This is uh, it's really tough. I uh, I'm not uh, not feeling great about this one because uh, the shoulder for a power hitter is not exactly what you want to see in April 14th. Correct. Uh, I, I I may discount a little bit of the concern because of cold weather. You know, don't want him to kind of aggravate it now or anything like that. But this also feels like something he's going to be dealing with for a while. Yeah. 
I uh, I do too. You just kind of you're just like waiting for the news update. Like ah, I'm going to go in the aisle for ten days to get it get it calmed down and get it worked out. But uh, not great for your second round pick, that's for sure. No, it's not great at all. Uh, so yeah, it, you know it's he's supposed to be like one of those safe, healthy guys too. Like, you know, like, you know, stable guy, like you're not taking a chance. It's not like L.A. De La Cruz. Right. It's like, you know what you're getting here. You're, you're not in. The point is, he's not going to hurt himself sliding head first. That's the idea about it here. You know, and yet here he's the one with the shoulder problem. Yeah. By the way, uh, I, I think you know this already, but Ellie is really a lot of fun. Oh, he's super duper fun. Um, <laughs> that inside he, the park home run was awesome. It was ridiculous. And then, you know, the moonshot right before that, the moonshot. Yeah. And, uh, Chicago on Friday night was pretty darn awesome. Uh, yeah, he, he his on base streak ended today. Uh, Ellie's did uh, dated back to like last season. I think it was like 17, 18 games in a row. You know, the thing is, there, there's still the strikeouts are still there. It's still yeah. a problem with strikeouts today, but you know what? It, he's he's so much fun. And the Reds, when you, when you go 450 fun. to dead center and then you run a 14.9 second inside the park home run, like that is some crazy, crazy freak talent right there. Yeah. And I, I think you might have still beaten it out with the if the throw didn't hit the mound on. on yeah, it would have been. But it would have been. It would have been really close. But the throw being the mound definitely helped him. But man, just the the fourteen point nine. He didn't fully. He he ran hard pretty quick. But like he could probably have been a little quicker if he ran right out of the box. But that was uh, it was crazy. Yeah, don't drive for balls in center field unless you're going to get him if if, if Valley's up. Yeah, yeah. You you best not miss. Someone in the chat's asking what to do with uh, J Rod, who I assume is Julio Rodriguez, and uh, you just play him and leave him just in. He will him. be yeah. he'll be fine. I know he's hitting one eighty six. There are a lot of guys that are hitting poorly to start the year, but uh, you just you just play Julio. I know he's, he's striking out a lot, though. 33% strikeout rate is not what you love to see. We're only at 63 plate appearances, though. But Julio started a little bit slow last year. He ended up 32-37. Like, uh, I think that uh, I think you just just play him. Don't take him out. Don't trade him. Nothing like that. Um, Christian Yelich, another one that uh, was, was playing pretty well. Uh, missed the weekend. Could go in the aisle. A back issue, though, that's concerning for Yelich because that is what has caused him issues in the past. Um, backs are always, uh, tricky, but man, when they come back, it's not a good sign. No, it isn't. Uh, and you know, he, he's had his various issues in the past yeah. too. And that's the thing that's kind of scary. He's been really healthy the last two years after, uh, after, you know, had some struggles, 2021, he missed a lot of games, but, uh, yeah, definitely not ideal. He'd already homered five times, was hitting 333, uh, wasn't striking. He looked really good. Yeah, he sure did. Uh, uh, you know, the power, that's the thing that kind of caught my eye. It was he was yeah. hitting for power so far, Yelich was. And the Brewers, I mean, they lost today because they and they used their closer in the seventh, by the way, too. Uh, yeah, in, in that was, uh, it was, and it wasn't like middle of the order. It was 8-9-1, too. Yeah. Uh, so, this, but the Brewers are off to this great start so far, uh, even with that loss today. Yeah, they uh, they are. They've been scoring a bunch of runs. William Contreras looks really good. Their offense has been uh, been pretty good. Um, someone in the chat asked you, Jeff, if, uh, is, is the Cubs, uh, oh, I'm looking at different ones. Is, is Michael oh. Bush, uh, is Michael Bush, January article worth adding if Yellows just go on the deal? Michael Bush's homered, uh, four games in a row for the Cubs. He's worth adding regardless. Um, yeah. I think, but, uh, it, he, he got traded to a, a team, you know, where he got some opportunity because he wasn't going to have that opportunity in Los Angeles. That's the thing about the Dodgers. They were so loaded. They kind of had to clear room on their 40 man roster. Weird, uh, right? It feels like they just. Yeah. Kind of gave him away though, right? Yeah, uh, they they did. Uh, and meanwhile, Chris Taylor just struck out again. Boys, uh, bad. I was at the game on Friday, and I knew he like I don't follow Chris Taylor. I knew he has been struggling. They put up the 0.034 on, on the scoreboard, and the guys we were trying to figure out exactly how many at bats that is. I think it was one for thirty one or where it was, but man, it's it one for twenty eight. But it's it's really he looks so. He struck out three times on Friday night, and he, and he had got on an error and then popped out in the in the eleventh with a guy on base and. Man, he looks terrible to play. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, and Angelo in the chat says Dodgers should have trained Bush at second. They tried. They did try to put him at second yeah. base in the minors, and it didn't take, really. Uh, so that, that's kind of their problem, uh, is that they kind of got locked into some positional issues there. Uh, and corners, the corners were taken. Um, and that and corners and DH were taken. And that, that you know, we, ha- we run into that problem in fantasy, Scott. Uh, yeah. Where we fill up our corners, we fill up our D or utility slot. Well, and there's nowhere left to play because those are, you know, it's it's, you know, it, it this just in. It's hard to play middle infield in the major leagues and play it with the uh, Mook, Mook, there. Mookie thinks you're crazy. Yeah, well, Mookie is crazy. I mean, Mookie is biz- <laughs> what a what a bananas. what a freak of an athlete. He's, he's, I love Mookie. Yes. 
Uh, speaking of, uh, you mentioned uh, Abner Uribe pitching the seventh. Uh, Pete Shanky asked, was dropping Joel Piamps a mistake this week? Um, I still don't think so. I still think it's just Uribe, but it was it was weird usage, and it was not for the middle of the order. It was very strange. Yeah, Scott Service says there's nothing possibly wrong with that, but, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. But, yeah, yeah. that's true, too. Um, a couple of injury notes before we do talk about talk some fab here. Carlos Correa. Uh, you know, one of those guys who always has something going on IL with a quote minor intercostal strain. Um, I don't feel like any intercostal strains are every minor, but uh, obviously, if uh, you have Carlos Correa uh, at uh, middle or shortstop, need to replace him uh, before uh, before tomorrow. Uh, Sal Perez was, was uh, removed. Uh, he we made a play at home. It was actually an out at home. Um, he was well, like a sore left hip and groin. I think he's going to be fine from everything I read. He's day to day, but that's a tough one because. It's Sunday night. You got to add a third catcher. Nobody wants to add a third catcher, but you kind of have to have someone in case he, you know, misses the first half of the week or goes on the aisle. Uh, that was a really tough one to figure out in Fab if you had, if you had South Perez. So, do you have to add a third catcher when you're adding the 33rd catcher, 34th catcher overall? Who's that? Who's actually out there that you can add? Is it? I would add uh, like Miguel Amaya, probably. I'd rather, rather have than a week of zeros. You're gonna get like you might get seven at bats, and maybe that's yeah. that's fine. It you know Amaya might be fine actually. I kind of like him. Low I do too, like- and he's playing starting to play more than than Jan goes. But you're right. I mean, there's a there you might you're probably getting a one for twelve with a lot of these guys, or a one for eight even if some of these guys you add. But you know, I don't like taking zeros. I think I, if I, I had either. Perez, I probably would have just chilled. But uh, you know, if he goes in the IL, it's, it sucks to have zeros. It depends. Depends what you have to drop. Depends how many guys you have on the aisle already as it is. Um, you know, a lot of that comes off, that comes into play, obviously. It does suck, though, when you invest in catchers and then lose one. Um, and then it does. You know, it's one thing when you're playing the Gary Sanchez game, um, and then you just, okay, you just cut them and you move yeah. on to the next one. But I don't like, like yeah, doing that either. I don't think that's very much fun, but some people do it. And you get you do eventually land on a Jonah Heim every once in a while, and it works yeah. out for you. But years. you can also add 15 guys over the course of the year I've done before and get oh, yeah, never, I've done that never get anybody. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. it's pretty amazing to never hit anybody, but I've done that. Um, I have Sean Murphy in one of my leagues, and I've, I've, I've already added Gary Sanchez and Reese McGuire in the last couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm kind of playing that game already. I wish I'd had, I added Yvonne Herrera last week. We talked about him last week during Fab, and right. um, you know, he, had a, he had a couple home runs, and he seems like he might uh, he might kind of forge some playing time, whether uh, you know whether we, even with Contreras healthy. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think there's there was already at least one game this week where one caught and the other was the DH. And I'm pretty yeah. sure Herrera was the one that caught too, which speaks well for Herrera actually because that means that they trust his his work behind the plate. Yeah, I I agree there. Uh, a couple other notes here. Uh, Jake Berger uh, removed Sunday with left oblique discomfort. Uh, you never like to see that. No, you don't. Uh, and you know sometimes they get tr- uh, changed into adductor injuries and things like that, or intercoastal and all that. Yep. Uh, we we've seen that. Who was it? Uh, oh, it was. Um, well, it was Korea. It yeah, was in, it was oblique first, and then it was changed to minor in- intercoastal. But they did immediately put him on IL, so I don't really yep. care about the distinction. Yeah, you know, talk to me in two weeks, and we'll see how minor it really is. Yeah, so it's uh, it's uh, you never like to see that, especially with Burger. Burger had three home runs and fifteen RBIs, and it was the average was low, but and he's kind of what you you bought in for is you know power right. with a low average, and that's kind of what you're going to get. But he was uh, he dropped his strikeout rate. He was actually uh, looking pretty good. The Marlins, uh, you know, the Marlins have, have not been great so far, obviously, but uh, Burger was one of their uh, one of their brighter spots. Yep. Uh, and uh, go can ahead. I can I tell you one more thing, and then we'll move Please on. Do. Third base is starting to get real thin, Scott. We yeah, lost I, Royce. we lost Royce Lewis. As someone who's been trying to replace Royce Lewis for two weeks, boy, is it bad. Yeah, it's really bad. Uh, you know, even like Yuan Moncada is just one more player taken away. Not yep. that you're really counting on Moncada anymore, but but you had, to, was. you had to if you had him, you had to replace him, and that's just another corner. I've had a lot of trouble. It's funny there were some there were some middle infielders last couple weeks I liked, and I just didn't need to add middles, but I needed to add corners, and I'm just kind of cycling through, hoping to hit on one. Yeah, it's tough, and. That's I, I I have kind of thought about that that you want that second third baseman uh, whether it's a uh, Ryan McMahon is kind of ideal actually yeah he's definitely. second and third eligible uh, at least for one more year and then uh, you know you can play him either spot there and that's kind of handy there yeah I I like uh, Isak Paredes for the same reason um, yeah. 
it's it's nice to it have his fifth home run today already too that was uh he's, he's been good too yep. uh some of the chat asked about josh Lowe. that was actually the next guy on my list so that was uh, that was pretty nice uh josh Lowe is going to play like extended spring training games on monday and tuesday so kind of just at the club facility and then if those go well he's going to go into rehab assignment after that so we're probably looking at I don't know, Jeff. How long does Josh Lowe need in rehab? Probably a week. So maybe middle of next week, he's uh, he's back with the Rays. Maybe. Uh, you know, he he got hurt. Yeah, I guess it was kind of mid to late spring training. Yeah. Is that right? So I was yeah, kind of thinking he'd need maybe a week of games, ten days of games, something like that, just to kind of like that. Missing the end of spring training, not playing this first three weeks. I just kind of figured he'd probably need to get going. Um, but uh, the Rays could use him. They've had some. They've had some injuries too. Brandon Lau uh, hurt this week, so. Um, I think the Rays, uh, Rays could use, especially left-handed bat, losing losing loud and going to low uh, at least helps that a little bit. Uh, Framber Valdez, uh, I know, you know, yeah. as we were as we were dealing with the pitcher injuries, we heard, we heard Framber Valdez an elbow. We thought maybe uh, you know this is another uh, another night night, but uh, playing catch on Tuesday, he actually hopes to return when eligible. That seems uh, a bit optimistic to me, but it seems like at least uh, things are moving in the right direction with Framber to to not be out long term. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that is. Uh... Yeah, that 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 is good news, and the Astros need good news. Uh, yeah. Although they, they they did kind of recover a little bit over the weekend. Do, do the Astros need good news, Jeff? Well, they do. We don't need them to have that. Um, uh, you mean, they you mean you mean the last place Astros that you're referring to? Yes, that uh, did you you said that on purpose there, like you, with a little grin on your face there. They're, you they're take two the and, boy out of Oakland, but not the Oakland out of the boy. They're, they're two and a half games out of first in the power for L West with the eight and eight Rangers leading the division. Yeah, it's a slow start for the Rangers, who got born bad news uh, today with the Cody Bradford news. Yeah, Cody Bradford went on the IL with lower back soreness. He's been really good for them his last couple starts. Um, so yeah, they're just uh, they have a lot of guys that that are hurt too. Obviously, we talked about Josh Young a bunch, and he was he's out long term. So they've had a lot of stuff going on. Speaking of the uh, speaking of the Astros, Justin Verlander may make his uh, season debut on Friday. Last rehab outing was seventy seven pitches. They seem like they're going to throw him at the end of this week. In a fantasy league, Jeff, do you kind of trust the – as long as he throws some time next weekend, I'm good. Um, I think I start him this week off coming off 77 pitches. It's pretty awful 77 pitches. It was. It was not good. Uh, I, I, I think, think I think he's better than my pitcher nine in, uh, in, in, in almost any league. Yeah, uh, I, I think so too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he wasn't good at the end of the year last year either, though, Verlander wasn't. So I, I, I think it's a, it depends. Because I think there's a high Zambrano possibilities here. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I've been you know, I'm using that all the time now, dude. I love it. The four and two thirds, the four and two thirds with a lead and get taken out is just it's so Carlos Zambrano. It was beautiful. Yeah. You know, and uh, Miles Michaelis had the 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 negative Zambrano on us today, uh, where he left with a deficit and it got worse. Um he Michaelis left with the bases loaded and two outs, and uh the 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 reliever uh, Palante led all three in, so uh, I was feeling great. that uh, that Hunter Brown outing early this week, where he didn't get out of the first and gave up an all time record for hits in in, a, in less than an inning. I was sure when he left with the guy, the bases loaded, all three runs of those scoring too. They, the reliever actually got him out of that jam. Believe it. Or not. I know that's crazy. Did you have any Hunter Brown? Uh, one um, DC, I think, is where he I had him, and um, it was funny because that morning they played. They were the player early game, so it was like the, I think it was the only game that was going on. You could look at leagues and just you could see the Hunter Brown team just from looking at the standings. And it was like minus thirteen, <laughs> minus eleven, I minus seven. See that in my league. Yeah, I, yeah. I saw saw in our main, you know, the guy that had him, and I'm like, oh, and it's a good player too. That uh, was at, that was an all time bad outing. Yeah, it, it really was. Um, I think uh, God, who is the? There was a Royals pitcher once that had a similar sort of outing. Um, oh my God, Vin good. Mazzaro. Yes, it was Vin Mazzaro. Very good memory, dude. I remember that one. I think it was like 12 earned runs. We made I, I think he might have thrown like two or three innings, though, but it was, uh, yeah, it was a bad one. I had a Matthew Boyd one when he first came up where he um, didn't get an out. And I think yep. he had like six or seven runs. I picked him up and I was like, oh, I'm throwing this two step. And obviously didn't get an out and got demoted like right after the game. And it was uh, the infinity ERA in my on my stat sheet the whole year long was not not fun to look at. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's painful. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the injury notes before we move on. Uh, Marco Gonzalez went in the aisle with a left forearm strain. Uh, that one does not seem like it's going to uh, be great. Left forearm strains. Uh, not good when you're a left-handed pitcher. Um, and then Kyle Bradish, some good news here, making a rehab start in double A uh, this week. So he seems to be ramping up in, in a positive way here. Yeah, he is. Uh, you, you do like to see uh, Kyle Bradish there coming, you know, especially because the Orioles, you know, quietly, they're, they're 
their rotation is kind of shaky. And we all, it's, it's everybody first guessed this and said, why aren't they trading for another starter? Why aren't they adding another starter? Just because they got uh, Burns doesn't mean they're set. And, you know, Cole Irvin turned back into Cole Irvin with his eight ERA. I'm uh, stunned by that one. I know. I, I for one, I'm shocked, I tell you. But uh, yeah, Tyler Wells is not uh, pitching well. Dean Kramer. I was surprised at Tyler week. Wells. I got to say, that's the one I was surprised. I have no, I have no uh, Kramer. I have no, uh, I have no Cole Irvin, but man. Tyler it's kind of it's kind of Burns and Grayson right now, and then you're kind of hoping after that. So they you're you're right. There's some uh, they could really use Bradish back. Yeah, and you know, as Todd Zola is saying, you know, they they could also just improve the bullpen. Either way, if their if their games if their starts are going to be shortened with those guys, they need to have more depth in their bullpen. Something's got to improve. You know, they had a series in, in Fenway that does tend to help that, but then the Brewers, all three games were hitting these pitchers, yeah. even Burns today. They got uh, they got Danny Colum in the Colum in the pen. He used to be of the A's, and he was not good there. And every time I watch the guy pitch, he's awesome now. He's like five and two thirds. He's been really yep. good. I think he's like eleven strikeouts already, or something crazy like that. Forty two percent strikeout rate. He's been nasty as a lefty out of the pen. So uh, at least he's been helping. Yes, that's right. That's right. He threw uh, like one a other... change up or a screwball the other day against Milwaukee, and I I was like, who the hell is this guy? And I'm like, oh my god, he used to pitch for the A's. I can't believe I don't know who that is. But uh, yeah, I was really surprised. He did not look like that when he pitched in Oakland. Yeah, that's right. Uh, one other injury note you uh, announced right after uh, you sent the outline to me. Yep. Toronto. Uh, Jordan Romano is coming back this week, as is Danny Jansen, as is Eric Hansen. Um, so your Yimi Garcia and Chad Green shares are probably going to dry up this week. Maybe there's one or two uh, outings there before that happens, but I'm going to activate Romano in the main. Uh, where we Are you? I was going to ask you that question because, you know, I have him too. I actually dropped... I dropped Chad Green myself in that in that league. I picked him up. Got to say this week, I'm, I'm kind of okay yeah. with that. Thank um, him, shake his hand, and send him to Omaha. Yeah, yep. I was he was not expensive, so I grabbed him and sent him back. Uh, you're starting Romano this week, huh? You're going with the. Uh, I think so. I mean, our pitching's weak, and we only have one closer right now. So, do you uh, think uh, he? I saw the quote. He said he didn't think he needed any more rehab outings. Um, do you think he closes right away? Maybe not the first time, yeah. but soon. As soon, the, you know, the Jays have had. Oh, like th they've had like three save situations and those two guys have done fine. Yeah. They've had two one run games and I think one two run game. I was, I was reading that today, but uh, yeah, the, the Jays are last in the AL East. They'd be first in the AL West, which if, if anything, we're, we look like we're back to the, uh, the last year with the, uh, the AL East having five good teams. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I've got my, uh, our, our, Shu and I's uh, main team. I mean, pitching is definitely shaky. Yeah. Um, especially if Tanner Bybee doesn't turn it around. Uh, we're stuck with him uh, at this point in time, but yeah, we, we need some help. Uh, today, Yesterday was a good day. Today was not a good day. We had Ryan Nelson pitch a gem yesterday. He looked he looked really good, too. I think that's going to work out pretty well. But today was Tyler Anderson come up and stay. Uh, you know, Nathan Avaldi was terrible, uh, and Michaelis was, did Michaelis things, which we deserved. But it was a two-stepper, so we had to go with them. And, yeah. And we're we're missing steel. We're, we're we expected more from Bobby, so we needed these things. Still have a often a decent start with the team, but uh, the, we need the, the pitching help the, quick. The Bobby week is interesting because he gets Oakland uh, next Sunday, but at Boston on Tuesday, it's I going know. to be a really interesting start. It's a tough start. It's a tough yeah. start, but I'm going to roll with it. There, I don't think we have much of a choice. I think you. I think you got to roll with it. Hey, that's a good heads up on the segue with Boston. Uh, they do play at eight in the morning Pacific time tomorrow, Jeff. That's right. Yeah. It's the dreaded Patriots Day game. Eight uh, eight ten a.m. for first pitch. Uh, Cleveland and Boston. Uh, Steph Curry's brothers, Xavier Curry and Cutter Crawford, pitching in that game. So um, make sure if you have any Guardians or Red Sox or your league locks at first pitch. Which are there still leagues that do that? I don't even know. But um, yeah, there are. There are. I'm in them. I think that uh, modern technology should have it so there aren't leagues like that, but that's just my opinion. Uh, right. Make sure make sure you know there's a game at 8 in the morning Pacific tomorrow, 11, uh, 10 Eastern. So make sure all, all your lineups are on there. Every, every year or every offseason maybe or at some point during the season, I yell at my commissioner, we got to change that setting, and he just doesn't. It's the default setting on Yahoo. Oh, is it? Yeah. so annoying. And, like, I got to remember, like, and you can't, like, if I, I can pick up guys all the way up until midnight tonight, but – if I pick yeah. someone up at 1201, I won't be good for next week. I have to wait to the week after. And, uh, and then if you want to pick some up and draw some in your lineup, you got to wait till the games are like the game. The next day. So the games are over. This is some stuff. You can change all those settings. Like no daily. Yeah. There's no daily. Sure you do that. Yeah. yeah. There's no like 
it, it's weekly roster moves, but all first come first serve pickups. It's this weird animal and I hate it. <laughs> uh, let's get into fab this week. There actually turned out to be some, some big bids. It didn't really look that way on Saturday morning, but it turned out to be uh, some, some interesting bids this week. But first note from our sponsor vivid seats. Finally, baseball is back. Uh, preach on there. Uh, this major baseball season is to knock, it, knock it out of the park with vivid seats and score great tickets to the biggest games of the year. Every fastball, every home run, every eye-popping play of your favorite team live and in person. Plus, with Vivid Seats Rewards, you earn rewards with every single purchase. Just buy 10 tickets, then cash in your credit towards your free 11th ticket. Talk about an easy win. And here's a pro reward tip. When you're buying tickets for the whole group, split the bill and make progress towards your free 11th ticket even faster. From behind the dugout to the upper deck, Vivid Seats has great tickets for all the 24, day, 20, 24 games that matter to you. Visit VividSeats.com or download the app today. Vivid Seats, experience it live. See VividSeats.com slash rewards for all terms and conditions. So, Jeff, let's start uh, starting pitchers. There's been uh, – starting pitcher is a thing that uh, has been tough this year. Uh, a lot of injuries that we've covered last couple of weeks. But uh, some names this week. I think the top two uh, – Jose Buto in, uh, in, for the Mets uh, pitched really well today to ramp up his price. Uh, six innings, no earned runs, uh, nine strikeouts. He actually – um, battled Cole Reagans to a 0-0 draw, both of them through six innings. Really good game there. Uh, has pitched well in his uh, his couple of appearances, pitched pretty well last year when he got called up. And then uh, Yariel Rodriguez in Toronto, uh, one of their prospects, got – he's from he's a Cuban guy who pitched, uh, I think, in the Far East, and then uh, they signed him for like $32 million, uh this year. Seems like uh, he came up and started for Bowdoin Francis. Seems like they're going to kind of use him as a – a long man, but starting games is kind of the quote I saw. It seems like uh, he might pitch four or five innings of starts, but he looked pretty good too. Uh, the stuff looked to be there. Uh, I thought those were the top two pitchers. Uh, did you agree? Were you in on those guys? What were you doing with uh, with Buto and uh, Yario Rodriguez this week? Bidding on them and losing for the most part. <laughs> I, I, I got uh, – that's not entirely true. I got Yario Rodriguez in AL Tout Wars for uh, 77 out of 1,000. Keep in mind it's an AL only league too, so – Oh, all right. Pretty happy with that. Uh I, I was what well, it's it's five by five it's obp um and i you know it's hard to get enough bats but i actually needed the arms here so i i, I was uh, after him i think i might have i'm trying to see i think i got yariel somewhere i think maybe is in yogurt uh no i got budo there uh maybe one of the beach f ericsons i got him no um i'm trying i know i was in on him but i i did prioritize budo first um, I, uh, I did too. I just think that the usage on Yariel might be a little uh, all over the place. Yeah. And, uh, Mendoza, the Mets manager came out today after the game. He's like, yeah, Jose Buto's not going anywhere in our rotation. Like, of course pretty, not. I mean, of course not. Yes. But if I should come out and say it, I kind of, I kind of like that too. Um, but yeah, and I agree. I mean, but the fact, and the fact is he had to say that because in the past it wasn't a guarantee. In fact, he'd been yeah. riding up and down on the roster. Now he's like, yeah, he's in. Yeah, uh, I added him in one main event. I overpaid a little bit. I got him for 71. I thought the bidding was going to be a little more bit in on him, but his backup was 26 there. So overpaid a little bit, but I need starting pitchers there in a pretty bad way. And I have mm, kind of two and a half closers with Romano coming back. So I went him over the closers that were available. And then he, uh, I got outbid in my other um, – my other man I went for a closer, and I got outbid on my secondary bid. For, but he went for 50 yeah. in that one. So and Yariel went for 75 and um, 52 in my two. So yeah, it was a uh, popular bidding, not uh, not too uh, not too drastic, but uh, I uh, I like what I've seen from Buto so far. Yeah, Buto went for 125 in my main. Uh, uh, I feel le- I feel less bad about my bid now. That's good. And Yariel went for 106 in my main. Oh, uh, so uh, both you guys it, yeah. you guys were aggressive then. Yeah, we've been aggressive all year. Uh, Budo, though, he gets the Dodgers in Dodger Stadium this week. I think it's a it's a it's a buy him on Fab and bench him this week. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of formats you're not allowed to do that. So, so like that for instance, true. in my mixed labor league, I think I'm not even going to bid on Budo, or maybe because I, I don't want to bite the bullet on Budo. Um, and just on, on that because I think it's going to be a bad start. And although then again, maybe that's the price you pay, but. At some point in time, McGill comes back for the Mets, and then they all of a sudden they have to start thinking about things like who's going to be in the rotation. But I the think, fact that uh, I think McGill's going to the pen, I think you're probably right yeah. about that. Um, and we don't know exactly when McGill's return date is, too. Yeah. So I might change my uh, stance on uh, in my labor. In and labor it's quarter. not like Adrian Hauser is good. Like there's a lot of names. Yeah, it's not like the Mets have no. so many guys who are like, oh, I don't know where he's going to fit. Like, if Budo's pitching well, he's gonna he can fit over probably most of those guys, but Severino and Manaya maybe are kind of locked in. I guess Quintana is, but uh, I think there's plenty of spots there if he's pitching okay. Yeah, you're probably right about that. 
Uh, so I'm, I am going to, I'll bite the bullet. He won't be my primary target. I think I'll go, uh, I, I've got a couple of relievers actually ahead of him, but uh, in that league, I'm really light on saves. Yeah. We will get to relievers in a second because there were some there were some names there too. Uh, what did you do kind of down the board at start of this week? We've got uh, just some names here. We got Michael Lorenzen coming back. He's going to start for uh, the Rangers tomorrow. He's going to get a two start week at Detroit. It looks pretty good, Jeff. And then Saturday at the Braves. Uh, no thanks on that one. But uh, Matt Waldron in, uh, in San Diego pitched well against the Dodgers. The, the knuckleballer. He's been looking pretty good. Uh, Jose Soriano uh, called replacing uh, Chase Silseth in Anaheim. He's got two starts this week and it's looked pretty, pretty good. Although the second one's at Cincinnati, which is a tough place to pitch. Uh, what'd you do kind of down the board this week at uh, starter after Buto and Yariel Rodriguez? Uh, you know, I, let's see, I'll, I'm going to pull up my fab results. That's one thing I love is being able to say, Oh yeah, this is what we did. So down ball, like ballot guys, I wrote down a list of like, all the starters on our projected starters grid that were available uh, okay. uh, before this show, actually this morning uh, at 10 a.m. I'm on on Sundays with Todd Zola, folks, if you want to hear us. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m., 10 a.m. Uh, Best Coast time on Sirius XM Fantasy. But uh, Joe Ross is a guy that Todd is kind of in on. He had two start. He has two starts this upcoming week. Yep. He was in my waterfall, Ryan Yarbrough, who's getting one start probably, and then Walker Bueller comes back. But Yarbrough might just be good anyhow. Uh, he was available in my main. Wade Miley was available. I talked down shoe from Andrew Heaney, who was available in my league. I think, I mean, the, the fact that Bradford got hurt means Heaney sticks around, but he's not any good. Yeah. Just get the start against Detroit this week. Uh there was a uh, there was a credit given to you in the uh, Rob Di Pietro uh, one of his columns this week about uh, waterfalls. He gave full credit to you. He used the term. It's and not said my hat, term. He said hat tip to Jeff Erickson. Well, he gave you the term anyway, so he gave it to you. I know yeah. it, was, it was you took from James Anderson, I think, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, so you did get credit though in print. It was pretty nice. That is nice. And yeah. Rob's good people too. We like Rob. Uh, I have Matt Waldron already in our main. Uh, we grabbed him, or I think when he had the two start week, and I talked you into keeping him. Looked okay against the Dodgers last night. Uh, not a ton of strikeouts, but he got through a Dodger Stadium start unscathed. So you'll take. I it. thought he. I thought he looked pretty good too. And it's weird, like yeah. his fastball is like it's a knuckleballer, but he he throws it like enough that it can be usable. Where some guys like can't ever do that. It seems like he can do it. Uh, he could do it kind of a little bit enough. I I liked what I've seen there, um, but uh, yeah, I, I do like the Waldron ad. Uh, interesting. Uh, since we're talking two steps, someone in the chat asked, "Would you rather um, throw?" Luis Heal or AJ Puck for their two starts this week. Um, someone asked what, what the Yankees did with Luis Heal. It was just the rainout stuff. They just moved uh, Cortez up to today because he was on regular rest. Luis Heal's throwing uh, should is, is scheduled to throw twice next week at Toronto and Tampa Bay. Um, I agree. I think I'd go Heal. I don't. Uh, I don't really trust. I do I trust AJ Puck right now. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, and it's all about distrusting AJ Puck. Um, yeah, and the the issue with Heal is like he hasn't gone deep enough in the games, but AJ Puck hasn't gone five in a start yet either. So it's not like we're looking at anything there. Yeah. Oh man, he's doing a puck drop comment in the coats uh, comments there. Uh, yeah, Anthony uh, is. Uh, you know, I say go where the puck is moving, not where it's been. I understand, but uh, <laughs> I I don't think uh, I, I i have to see something from puck uh, i think there is a good chance there is just a good a chance he gets moved back to closing as there is than him succeeding as a starter and tanner scott has been uh brutal yeah uh he has he has been very brutal blew, blew the save today give a three-run yep. homer to uh, marcelo zoon it has been uh, it's been rough for tanner scott so far the only only uh thing saving him in that role is that everybody else has been brutal too. Uh notwithstanding today's effort by the Nard Dog, uh, yeah. which was actually a good outing. But he, I think he's lowered battle. his he's lowered his ERA to like twelve one seven, I think I saw. Yeah, three Ks though. Um he's, so, a, look, I, he's a good pitcher. He's gonna I, relievers when you have one or two blow ups, that, that ERA looks ugly for a while. Yeah, I I we drafted rostered uh nardi and uh the first week uh, the first four days and he had two miserable outings that yep. just crushed our era i've since dropped and he since got picked up this week so we'll see uh, this is one where i'm gonna get whipsawed i think yeah uh you mentioned ryan nelson earlier on your main event team he's was only uh 22 rostered in 12 teamers 
Uh, he is someone that I would definitely grab. I, I liked him preseason. Some of the real, the smarter mm-hmm. pitcher guys, we liked him. Uh, Nick Pollock was really big on Ryan Nelson and some of his podcasts in the preseason. Yes. Obviously, That's when the Nick, reason why I drafted him. Yeah, yeah. When Nick talks about pitching, you know, I think everybody listens. He's really, really good at that. So uh, Nelson, you know, he started out with the Yankees in Atlanta. So like it was a really tough starts out, 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 out the gate, but uh, pitch well against St. Louis this weekend, uh, 22% rostered in 12 teamers. Um, I think uh, I think he's one of the one of the prime guys. I was looking at twelve teamers. Someone that uh, I think should be way more rostered than that. I agree. Uh, I was really encouraged by this. Now the Cardinals are kind of in a bad way right now offensively, but still, I'll take it. Well, yeah, you got three automatic outs of Victor Scott at the bottom of the lineup. It's not great. And, you know, Nolan Arenado while we're at it too, but yeah. uh, really kind of struggling. are they going to keep playing Victor Scott? No. Everything they say, I agree with you. Everything they say. Seems like they are, and they're not sending him down. But man, it's. it's I think the it's next outfielder weird. they get back, yeah. they'll. That's when they'll make the move. They'll give him until that. But there's a lot of quotes like, oh, "He looks really good at the play. He's just not. This is bad luck, and he's really good on defense." But mm-hmm. there's only so long you can have a guy hitting what is he, 080 or whatever's in the lineup. Uh, but uh, it's tough. Um, last guy I want to ask you about. And he might be losing his rotation spot this week, which is kind of the concern, but. Uh, Ben Brown in Chicago has looked uh, has looked pretty good his last two outings. The first one was bad against Texas. He got smoked, so his numbers look bad. But uh, four innings, one earned run uh, against Colorado, then four and two thirds, and uh, no earned runs against San Diego. So Zambrano. a little bit of Zambrano right there. But five strikeouts in each of those. Uh, he's looked pretty good and maybe extending himself a little bit. But uh, Jamison Tyon's back this week, so um, I was a little uh, I pulled back my bids a little bit because he should throw twice. He's going at Arizona. Uh, tomorrow so and you know even with a six man he would, he would go out again but if Tyon slots in and bounce brown slots out he would miss the uh, the home miami star which is tough yeah that's right that's right and uh yeah and the thing is brown's first outing was like you said at texas and it was right yep. after the call up it wasn't a start they kind of just threw him in there because they needed someone to, to pitch and he got torched uh so i i, I don't i'd kind of hold i wouldn't hold that against him i think he's got real talent but you, as you alluded to, role is the question. But I think if you're in a 15 teamer, you take the chance that he's just really good, and then they'll they'll find a way to make it figure figure it out. But yeah, I mean his, his real problem is Javier Assad's pitching very well right now. Yes. Uh, but then again, Hendricks is terrible. Wicks can't go five. Uh, there's 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 plenty of windows here where this could work. And I'm not sure Tyon is good either anymore. But there's that. But uh. Ibanaga hasn't given up a run yet this year, though. He is good. That's that is crazy. A real pitcher. Yeah. And, I mean, this is a team that's really missing Justin Steele. It just set everybody yeah. up one layer, one rung too high. Yeah, it has. Um, Jeff, relievers were interesting this week. There were a couple of names. Um, Kirby Yates in, in, in the Rangers uh, system here, or system organization. Uh, Jose LeClerc has moved to low leverage roles very rapidly. He looked really, really rough. Pitched a sixth inning the other day. The way it's lined up, They've kind of gone David Robertson, then Kirby Yates in a couple of games that weren't save ops, but it just kind of worked that like that was the progression they used. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to like, you know, figure out what Bruce Bochy can do. I think we we, we think that Bruce Bochy, when he will it will pick a guy, and when he picks a guy, he probably uses him fairly traditionally because it's just kind of the way Bochy's been in the past. Um, so you got David Robertson there, who is pretty much universally owned in the main event. So I, you know, obviously mm-hmm. couldn't do image there, but Kirby Yates was, was 19% owned coming into tonight in the in the 15 team man. He was almost unowned. He was Five percent in the twelve teamers. Uh, he had a lot of a lot of bids this week. Uh, were you in on him? Do you think he is going to get the next op? What do you think? Uh, what do you think happens here in Texas? Because I think the the Bruce Bochy thing kind of makes everybody think that's going to be one guy. See, I, it wasn't that way last year though. Bochy had the chance to make it one guy last year and didn't. So I'm not. They, really... they went with Leclerc late in the year, right? Who'd they go in the middle? I don't remember who it was. But they used like they used uh, Will Smith. A lot. Oh, it was. It was Will Smith. That's right. Yeah, and they used random people, sabors in the in the playoffs too. I and mean, was it? It was anyone that could get an out. Uh, so, I mean, Leclerc is. I think Leclerc eventually closes again. Uh, because I don't. I'm not really. I know uh, Robertson's looked good so far. I don't know if if he pitched today or not, but. Uh, I mean, Will Smith had 22 of the 30 saves last year. Yeah. Uh. It, yeah. Exactly. But and yet by the end of the year he wasn't closing. Yeah, he, he, he kind of found his way out of that job. Yeah, uh, Robertson is actually throwing harder than he did last year by a pretty big jump. Actually, 
He's averaging uh, going into the day 95.8 miles an hour on his fastball is 94 last year is 93 the year before that. This is kind of a bizarro situation there. I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad anymore to be throwing harder than used to. Yeah, well, up and comer <laughs> like Robertson like that, I think you take right. your chances. But at uh, uh, age 39, you're throwing hard. But yeah, he's been I mean, he's been is he his whips under one is the area is 108 so far. Obviously, we're eight innings in, but he's been really good. Um, I was just kind of going based on the usage, uh, the way they've kind of lined up. Yeah, maybe like want to keep Robertson where he is, but uh, you know we're talking about a, a team that should be won the World Series last year, should be competitive, should be really good, uh, will win a lot of games, and getting a closer on that team is pretty big. Um, Yates went for sixty eight and one oh something in my league, one oh two, um, so he's popular. You know, there's a lot of people that have uh, the need saves, and I was bidding on Yates. Yeah. yeah, did you get him anywhere? Uh, yeah, I didn't get him in the main, unfortunately. He went for seventy five in mine. Uh, did we have the 50, we 57 was second and no, we bid 39 and still didn't get him. You know, this is a continuing variation of a theme for us here. We we're just not bidding enough, uh, in our main. And are you not bidding enough or are these guys you don't really love that much? You don't need to bid that much. Little column A, a little column yeah. B. Cause yeah. like column A, like you need to fix column B. Like you got to find guys that you want more and you didn't spend money on them later. Yeah. It's column C is Cologne. Um, and you know, just sorry. Uh, not really. Uh, I'm not sorry. Uh, no, Yates is, uh, yeah, Yates was a target of mine. I got, I think yogurt's where I got him there. Um, I got, I, I got a lot of Ryan Stanek is where I ended up with him. I know he's on our thing. Um, that was my next question. Have two guys named Ryan in the same, uh, fab uh, period as it was kind of interesting with him and Nelson, but, uh, no, I'm Yates, by the way. Sorry. You're what? Sorry. I'm Yates I thought I had oh, somebody. Yeah. I'm Yates Go ahead. Sorry. Um, Stanek got the save the other night as they used uh, Andres Munoz to, in, the, in the high leverage spot. I think he faced the four, five, and six in the eighth inning. But it appears uh, very clear that they're going to use Munoz kind of in the spot they need him. Sometimes that'll be the night. Sometimes that won't be. Um, do you uh, do you think Stanek is worthy worthy of an ad based on the fact that they're just moving Munoz around so much? Yeah, I absolutely do. This is this is what Scott Service has always done. Uh, so why would it change? Just because they went they they, they took out Matt Brash? Okay. We'll, we'll give you Stanek instead. And like Stanek, they, he weirdly went away from it last year too. Like he was the first like couple months he did, and then he was all seawalled for so long. Well, Munoz got hurt last year. Yeah, I guess they didn't have any other options. Yeah. Um, and usually there always is another option. Uh, but the, you know, Stanek is actually good too. I mean, I think that's the thing. He's been in a late inning role before, so he's not afraid to use him. So thus Stanek gets chances whenever they need to use Munoz earlier. Yeah. Uh, and I think one of those times it was it was it wasn't even that high a leverage situation for Munoz either. So, uh, yeah, I I'm trying to get ten saves out of Stanek for the you know, and so the problem is, and it's always the problem is. So he's, can got, I he's, got, he's got two, he's got two already. So yeah, yeah. But the problem is like, do I can I time the market right? Can I you know yeah. he's he's going to be active when I Stanek is the type of guy who's going to be active when we don't have good starts. Yep. Uh, you know, or if we decide to wait on a week on another week on Romano. And just let it play out for a week. Then maybe we roster Stanek this week instead. That's what I did with Roldis Chapman last week, and you know pitched well, but didn't get anything. But uh, yeah. it's kind of those weeks where you don't have that eighth or ninth guy. You can throw a a really good uh, reliever who might fall into a save. That's when you toss them in there. And I mean, Stanek's got two, and Munoz has two, so it's not like it's been pretty uh, pretty even so far in terms of saves. And they haven't had a lot of save chances because they they can't hit at all. So uh, so that's been the other problem. Someone asked the chat about, uh, do you think Jackson Holiday's worth stashing? Absolutely, do not drop Jackson Holiday. Keep keep him for sure. Um, let's talk about let's talk about hitter fab Jeff. We had uh, it's a good segue because we had an Oriole that was the was the big bidding at least in twelve teamers. But first, a note for our sponsors on demand DFS. Do you ever think back to the golden age of fantasy football? You know when it was all about the love of the game, the camaraderie, and yes, the bragging rights. Well, our friends at on demand DFS are bringing those days back with their revolutionary app that's changing the game for fantasy fans everywhere. Gone are the days of confusing entry fees, playing against unknown masses, or juggling multiple apps to trash talk with your league mates. On-demand DFS is here to streamline your fantasy football experience, making it more about strategy, fun, and most importantly, your community. With On-demand DFS, you can create a contest in seconds, invite your friends, and you're off to the races. No entry fees, no gimmicks, just pure fantasy football bliss. And here's the kicker. You're not limited to current season players. Imagine crafting your dream lineup from over 5,000 NFL net legends and today's stars, using real historical data to simulate the action. And for those who hate the wait, you'll love Turbo Mode. Contests wrap up in minutes, not hours, keeping the excitement going all week long. Download the on-demand DFS app now and get started with a 30-day free trial. Dive into a fancy football experience that's rich in history, strategy, and most importantly, fun. 
It's time to create your legacy with the ultimate lineup of legends and live out your fancy football dreams like never before with on-demand DFS. So, Jeff, we had a Baltimore Oriole that was uh, was big and bidding. It was not Jackson Holiday because he was pretty much rostered everywhere. Uh, Colton Kowser, uh, 93% owned in the main event, but mm-hmm. only 26% rostered in 12-teamers. So he was uh, he was the big bid. I saw some huge bids in the – I think it was like four main events he actually was available in. The 12 teamers, uh, you know, at 7.02, uh, all the all the screenshots came up of big Colton Kowser bids. Uh, he's been great so far. He had a huge week. The stats look good. The metrics look good. He's playing a lot. He's kind of moved Austin Hayes to the bench a bunch. Uh, what do you think about Colton Kowser? He's more of a 12 teamer. Do you think he was worthy worthy of the uh, the heavy bids? There were uh, there were a lot of triple digit bids on Kowser this week. This is cue up the eating popcorn gif because I actually had him uh in the main and one of my 12s Ooh. and had him active too. So, wow, uh, look at you! Yeah, uh, yes, I, I think did he's you guys great. draft cows or did you we in, drafted in cows? Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, in fact, we didn't even we didn't have him active for the Boston series, which sucked because he was but, awesome on there but for the weekend, you but did. we had him active for yeah. the weekend. Uh, we have Westberg for active too. Um, love those guys, it's just. It, the, it's going to be a continuing issue of how you fit all these I mean, awesome he had, players. He had two homers this weekend too. It's not yeah. like you missed everything. Yes, uh, did that's have, right. Did he have five homers? He had five homers this week, right? Yeah. This is good. you know the problem is that he's going to have the best week of his life, maybe of his you know of his career, maybe at least of the season, I would think. But uh, I'm sorry, it was it was four homers this week. Sorry, it was four, but uh, two against Boston and two against Milwaukee. But uh, he's going to play though in this lineup. Like uh, I think, I mean, he's got a. So far, the, the hard hit rate looks really good. He's not uh, he's not striking out a ton. It's down to I think it's twenty four percent somewhere in there. He mm-hmm. hasn't strikeout issues in the minors, but fifty eight percent hard hit so far, seventeen percent barrel. I know it's a small amount of plate appearance, but he's looked really good. Yeah, it, it's the classic post hype sleeper. You know, he was terrible on getting the call up last year, and so he is extremely discounted. He followed up a really good spring with a good start to the season. He yeah. does. He he's playing more now and. I know the O's, what the O's really probably wanted to do was see like Hayes get off to a decent start and then flip him. Uh, yep. But this is the way it usually works is, okay, the the, the veteran has to just give way. Uh, but, you know, Kowser will sit against select lefties still. Yep. I, I don't think that's going to change. And um, I, don't, I don't, as a fantasy player, I think you probably don't even mind that. Like you don't need him going facing nasty lefties anyway. Right. Uh, you just want to avoid like that. Okay, we're facing the Marlins, so we have to sit out an entire series. Thing. Right. Or Tyler Anderson's pitching today. We better sit him because he's a lefty. Yeah. Um apologies to Tyler Anderson's father for using him as the example. Yeah. There, there you go again. <laughs> yeah, it was Tyler Anderson come up and stay, but it was only three uh, three runs allowed. Do not, so do not tweet that. Yeah, I know. I'm aware of that. Yeah. Um any uh, any Anderson really for you, Scott? Yeah. I think, what? Why do you hate Anderson, Scott? I don't. Brett know. Anderson, I, Tyler Anderson. I like James Anderson. Your uh, your colleague at Rotowire. Mm-hmm. I think he's nice a great dude. Yeah. The Anderson that's in the Red Sox bullpen that has two fluky saves. I mean, you hate him too, probably. The only, but... the only guy on UNLV's undefeated team that I really liked was Anderson Hunt too, which okay. is kind of strange. I couldn't stand that team, but I loved Anderson Hunt for some. Okay. Time. Fair enough. Love watching that dude play. Um. So yeah, Kowser was the big bid. I saw bids in the 200s. I saw bids in the 300s. I, I mean, saw 300, a, 400 bids, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is an impact bat, though. I mean, we we have not had many of those so far this year. We haven't had a lot of huge bid type guys. We haven't, you know, the big call-ups have been, have been already rostered. Um, you know, obviously Jackson Hollywood had huge bids, but he was already rostered everywhere. Um, same with some of the other rookies. So this is kind of the, the first, like, really big um, bid. And there were, there were some big ones. People were looking to spend some cash this weekend. Yeah, they were. Uh, and that, that's the thing is you want to do something. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I know there's there's going to be other guys along the way. You're going to get some pop-up prospects, some guys that weren't necessarily on our radar coming into the season. AL Tout Wars, you can pick up guys uh, uh, that haven't been called up yet. So there was a pretty big bid on Joey Loperfito from Houston. He seems like he's a home run every day. Like 10 homers or something yeah. like that. Uh, and Jose Abreu has like, 10 total bases. Uh, I, I, I know he had his first extra base hit yesterday, I think. So yeah, 10 might be high on that one. Yeah. I might be shooting. Yeah. Point. Yeah. He's on the struggle bus. I also have a lot of a brave. So before I, you know, I get too cocky at myself there, uh, but I finally found a way to bench a brave and get cows in there. It worked out pretty well. It's a good question. You brought up a brave though. I, I felt like this was the week where I struggled with drops a little bit because you're kind yeah. of in the period where like I've seen, Two and a half weeks, like Parker Meadows, uh, Gavin Lux, mm-hmm. Jose Abreu, guys that you know you drafted but weren't super high. 
Uh, what do you do with someone like Parker Meadows? Like, I think he might get sent down. It's been that bad. And he feels like he much might need a quick reset in AAA. Yeah, I wanted Meadows in more leagues than I did. I got him in AL Touts. I've got him in a couple other places. And uh, like Rob D. Pietro said in de- the Dead Pole Hitter uh, newsletter, you know, he's taking the L on him. And Rob's got him in like 14 DCs. He plays a lot of DCs. Uh, but I know then I know that's your favorite your favorite format right there. Yeah. Rob, uh, Rob won the DC overall, so he's uh, he should play some DCs. Yes, he should. He's good yeah. at that. Uh point though is like I'm right there with him. I have a lot of Parker Meadows. I uh I, he's overmatched right now. I don't know. But these I things mean, can turn around too. I mean they can. He's doing a couple of hot games but he's at I mean, he's killing your batting average. He has zero RBI on the season so far in 38 yeah. plate appearances. He's you know sitting against lefties. Uh, 40% strikeout rate. Like it's all really bad. It was someone that I like too. I have him in a couple of leagues too. And, and I'm starting to maybe, you know, sit him here and there, but at some point, like you see some outfielders come up you're like, that guy's really interesting. And I can't, uh, I couldn't pull the trigger. I kept him and uh, a Lux this week, but uh, both guys are really on the edge for me at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're, you're starting to see that in some of the drops this week. Uh, yeah. Like you said, and you know, Pay attention to the drops in your league. Uh, you can find some guys that, especially when someone drops a prospect that hasn't been called up yet, see if Paul Skeens has been dropped in your league. Yep. Um, maybe get the jump on that, especially you know if you if you lost Spencer Strider. Well, I was about to say it's it was you meant to drop him so weird to see Strider on the drop list in leagues. Oh, it's hurtful. So weird. It's, it's so hurtful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, go see if Skeens is available because I think I dropped him in a 12 in one of my leagues because I had to, at least I thought yeah. I had to. I think turns out I was wrong. Paul Skeens, by the way, 19 to 2K to walk in nine innings. Um, he is, uh, he shouldn't be facing minor league as many, he just smokes those dudes, dude. Yeah, he is. Uh, it, it's, it's happening just, really soon. He is gassing people. Like you watch the highlights and he is just gassing people. He yeah. looks like, uh, he looks almost like Mason Miller against major leaguers. Ooh, I know. And I think we're going to talk about that shortly. Did you, well, let's talk about it now. Did you watch that? Did you see his outing at all today? Yeah. He, he's, he's strong. He's just blowing dudes away. Like it's crazy. Like, he, it's one of those guys. He comes in and like, hey, this is going to be two or three strikeouts. It's like the slider, the last two sliders he threw to the, I forgot my lefty was up, but oh my gosh, he just, he smoked him. Yeah. I think, Luis, I think it was Luis Garcia, but it was just smoked him. It was, I mean, he was not even close to touching those. Balls. I had it on without volume as I was watching the end of the masters on one TV and I was, I had the, the grid yeah. channel on the other one. I was too. And Christy, my wife told me, he's like, Oh, Mason Miller's coming. Cause she knows I, I have him in the, in the main event and I like him. And I'm like, Oh, I'm flipping the sound over to the A's game for the first time all year. Uh, yeah. I listened, I listened to it. Uh, he was nasty. He was just, and the, the announcer's almost like laughing. Cause it's just so ridiculous how dominant he looks right now. Yeah, it's it's go figure putting him in a, a max effort short relief role. Yeah. I mean, ha, he stay, might be, uh, stay healthy. Yes. Yeah. Well, get yeah for more than three days at a time too. Right. Would be nice. Yeah. Um, other hitters, Jeff. Uh, I think uh, there was some interest in Josh Smith. I think we talked about him a little bit last week, but he's playing a bunch. He hit fifth today for the Rangers. Uh, third shortstop and outfield eligibility. Uh, David Hamilton in Boston. I think we touched on him a little bit last week, but he's someone that. Uh, if you need stolen bases, he's playing uh, at least on the correct side of the platoon in terms of, um, you know, he's a yeah. lefty, so he's facing a lot of righties. Uh, Pablo Reyes has been struggling a little bit on defense, had two caught stealings today. Mm-hmm. I know Von Grissom will come back at some point. I don't know if he's going to come back as a shortstop, though. Um, so, But uh, Hamilton had 70-something steals a couple years ago. This is like a real legit steal guy. I'm gonna, I took my shot on Hamilton uh, and a couple I got, of leads. I got that one. Yeah, I know. And it wasn't even a bad one. You didn't even groan. I was surprised. I, I, I like Hamilton a lot, so we're good. Yeah. There. Uh, yeah. Greg Smith asks, what assurances can you give us that he's not this week's Oliver Dunn? I can give you no assurances. <laughs> I will not assure you of anything. There's been a lot of like big pickups of the week. Uh, last year's Oliver Dunn, he did nothing. And Victor Scott was the big pickup two weeks ago, and I don't think he has a hit since. Yeah. Well, there, there's a reason why they're, they're, they are they're didn't have jobs to begin with there. But yeah. when, you're pl- when you're replacing Zach McKinstry, you take your chances, and, you know, and. Did, did, uh, did I read that? Did Zach, did Zach used to make a three run error and then come in and, come in and pitch the same inning? Yeah, it was a his awful no good inning. He gave up a three run home run. Gave up. Why did he come in, in a four run game? It was a four run game in the ex, in extra innings. Um, and, and they had a, they had a doubleheader later, but like that yes, seemed they like did. A, that, that this it was that's all it was. And they won the second game of the doubleheader. It so. still seemed like a short in your face, in Zach McKinstry. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, poor, Especially poor in the Zach bottom McKinstry. of the inning, you're going to get a guy on base anyway, so you're really only down three runs. That seems like a lot, but. Um, yeah, I mean Hamilton. I think it's just if you need steals, like I think it's a really interesting name. The other guy that I like in that regard is is Jacob Young in Washington. 
Um, he uh, he let off today, which is nice. He's a legit stolen base guy, really fast. Um, he had uh, when he had, who's this uh, again? Jacob Young. Jacob yeah. Young in Washington. He had 52 steals in 2022. He had uh, I think about 40 in 2023 in the minors. Uh, played fairly well for Washington last year when he got called up and ran a lot, which is the key to me. He had 33 games. He had 13 stolen bases last year. He's already got uh, five this year and only 32 plate appearances. He's someone that goes when he gets on base. He is. He is. And it's just, yeah, the the, the Nats have had multiple, like, three stolen base games already this year. And yeah, they're, the Reds had six stolen bases a day. There's certain teams that are running more, even though the total stolen base totals are down across the league. The, the running teams are running more. Fraley had three himself, right? Yeah, it was, it's, they were totally picking on the White Sox there. Um, it, it was it was fun. Yeah, he had three, and I think Will Benson had two, and that was a. It was a it's always fun when you see that you see the multiple steals in the box score. It's a, it's, it's a good feeling the stolen bases. It is. Um, other names in here that I thought were interesting. Uh, Jerkson Profar is playing a lot for San Diego. Uh, yeah. Curtis Mead's playing a lot for Tampa Bay now. He's going to slide over. He's going to get second eligibility. He's going to. We mentioned uh, Ryan McMahon. Earlier. He's going to have the similar second, third base eligibility pretty quick. Pretty quick here with Brandon Lau out. Uh, Blake Perkins playing a lot. If uh, Christian Yelich goes on the IL, he's playing about had a really hot weekend. Uh, what other uh, offensive names were you in uh, in on this week? Not many. In fact, our main we didn't bid on any hitters, but we're actually. You know, that we're, we're blessed that we have that uh, yogurt. I mentioned I got David Hamilton. Uh, let's see. Did I get it? Let's see. I'm trying to look in my online. Uh, you know, it wasn't it was it's tough to find hitters. I, I got Edward Oliveris in a league. I got That's, him. in. Uh, yeah, this, he, uh, he might actually just be playing most days, which is what we, like we wanted for three years. I know. Uh, I'm amazed at that. So, yeah, I I the, I've been hurt before, but I'm going to go back to it there a little bit with Oliveris. Yeah, I uh, I thought uh, he was uh, definitely on my list too. Uh, Pete was asking in the chat about Austin Martin, who in Minnesota, who's playing. Yeah, a lot I got now that on him in town. Yep, everybody's hurt on the Twins. Although Brian, Byron Bucks is still healthy, so there is that. But um, yeah, that Martin was interesting just because of the stolen base profile in the minors. He had thirty four in twenty twenty two. He had sixteen about sixty games last year, and he has a low strikeout rate, walks a lot, which you know you love for a stolen base guy. Just really good on base. You want the OBP to be decent, to get stolen base opportunities. So yeah, he's someone that uh, you know. If with playing time could come some steals. Yeah, that's true. Um, Byron Buxton. Let's go back to him for a second here. Um, how many combined home runs and stolen bases does Byron Buxton have so far? You're only asking because uh, it's probably zero, but I'm going to go with one. It's zero. I'm trying. Uh, I thought <laughs> maybe you maybe you tricked me into one. There was I forget who it was. I'm, I I feel bad. I forget, but someone. Uh, God, maybe the maybe it was the guild the guilds, but he mentioned that. Uh, he had Buxton and Otani, and he was able to sit the first two weeks of Buxton. Now he's going to put him in, in the outfield because he couldn't play two utilities. Like I'm just, I'm just benching the 200 and then putting him in. So that uh, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, it, well, so far <laughs> it hasn't not worked out at least. Buxton he, is back to striking out more than ever. He has a 36 percent oh, strikeout rate oh, right now. Like it's just so he's a his, he has a I think he it's he has a two percent walk rate. So it says he has 18 strikeouts and one walk. Yeah. It's it's awful. Uh, it's a thirty six percent K percentage right now. Not Oof. not great, Bob. Not great. Yeah, and not not. He has a three point four percent barrel rate, so he's not bearing up balls when he does hit it. It's been uh, it's been rough so far. Although he made he made a couple of good plays in center field. That dude can really play center field when they let him play. Yeah, Francisco Lindor had two hits today to raise his no. average to one twenty nine. I was gonna say he was under a hundred for so long. Yeah, he is so bad. Uh ay ay ay. Um, uh, you know. I, I, my main event team is doing well, but we're not hitting for average. I mean, we're, we're hitting, but not for average. We're doing everything else. And, uh, Lindor, well, when you're, out. when you're two, three turn pick is hitting yeah, a buck Oh three and a ton of at bats. It makes it really tough. Yep. Yeah. Uh, anybody else on offense? Uh, you know, I kind of like, uh, Lawrence Butler, a little bit in Oakland, hitting the ball hard, playing every day. Now that Brent Rucker's on the IL, uh, mm -hmm. Abraham Toro's leading off, but I had no interest in that one. Uh, Lennon Sosa's playing every day for the White Sox. I had no interest there either. No, nope. uh, Tyler Wade's playing a lot for San Diego. Nope. Maybe a little bit of a stolen base guy, but eh, kind of blah there. I think Garrett Cooper was mildly interesting this week. The Cubs face five lefties this week, either four or five lefties. Uh, Garrett Cooper probably plays a lot this week. Yeah, yeah, he might. Strictly, uh, strictly a streamer for the week kind of guy. Yeah, well, and how does that affect uh, Michael Bush? We spend so much time talking about Bush. Does he get hurt by that at all? That's right, because he uh, he's the lefty there. Um, that's interesting. That's an interesting point because he's had home runs and four straight innings. But I think he 
plays, right? Because it's against, uh, but against the lefty, you got to play Morrell. Bellinger's going to play, and then Gary Cooper slides in. Yeah, that probably is Bush, huh? Although I guess they have a DH spot open, right? Because Mike Talkman's not going to play against lefties. Yeah, I'm trying to think about the you know the Cubs. You probably go. You probably go Cooper for Talkman and call it a day. But maybe Magical gets a start in there for someone too. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was interesting. Uh, Dominic Canzone, I kind of liked coming in. He hurt his shoulder day. He got in a collision in the outfield, hurt himself. So I, uh, I kind of backed off those bids too. Yeah, um, and Canzone's hitting two nineteen. He just is slugged a little bit. Yeah, got a little bit of pop. But I mean, yeah. in fifteen teamers, kind of looking for anybody with a pulse when I'm, some of the guys sure. are starting. As my True. as my fifth outfielder has been have been really rough. But mm-hmm. um, let's talk about a couple other players before we jump out of here. We already kind of talked about Mason Miller. I was going to bring him up, but man, he's been awesome so far in his seven innings. Uh, they're using him. Uh, it seems smartly to me. Like in, they use him for a, a two inning stretch. Though they didn't play, didn't use him for a couple of days. He pitched on, you know, Friday. They, they're not. They seem they're really not going to touch him on back to back days, which I think is usually I get frustrated with. But I think that's really smart with Miller. I think that you just, he yep. he comes in gassing so much, and you want to keep him healthy. I just think you just don't want to go there. Yeah, exactly. Someone who I was not on, who is uh, is hurting so far, is Jose Altuve. Uh, he is, he's balling so far. He's hitting a 382, five home runs already. Um, I just can never figure out Altuve. I'm, uh, years I've taken him, he hasn't been good. Years I haven't taken him, he's been great. Um, so like I'm, I'm someone I can never time. Uh, but Jose Altuve is an awesome start. He's the guy I'm just like, just draft him. And I, I, I thought, oh, he's not running anymore. He's not hitting for power anymore. He's doing everything again. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, and I, I think, I really wonder if like the, uh, the whole trash can gate being the scapegoat, that scapegoat, one of the principal parties. I don't know if, he, you know, one of the principal targets of fan ire weighed mm-hmm. on him for a while. Could have been, although he hit 31 home runs in 2021. So maybe, so maybe not, not. much, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I got to I got to think about my timeline on that one there perhaps. But yeah, I mean he had that 2020 when he was horrible when that was a huge thing in 2020, so maybe a little bit in there, but maybe that was just a yeah. maybe that was just a, a 48 game sample where he would have figured it out by then, but uh only the 17 home runs last year, but it was only in 90 games. So it was like he, he was only like only a half season. I was a little bit worried about injury, I was a little worried about him running um He's been awesome so far. After There's last like, year when he bou- came back from that injury and just hit the yeah. ground running, I just said just draft him. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been great. So I'm I've taken the loss on that one so far. Obviously a long season, but uh, mm-hmm. someone that I faded that is uh, that's been really good. Someone I wasn't fading, but I don't have any of that has been awesome so far as Jose Barrios in in Toronto. He's a guy that for years we were like, this is the next this is the next ace, and he just never fully got there. He was always just good but not great. Uh, been lights out so far. Three starts. Uh, ERA is at 105 through seven great innings today uh, in their win. Uh, he's been really really good. Strikeouts are not really there, so it's just he hit seven today. But the strikeout rate was under twenty percent going into today. It probably went up. It obviously went up a little bit today. Mm-hmm. Uh, where were you on Brios coming into the season? Now, has anything changed at all since uh, since this uh, these three really good outings? Kind of like you, I was neutral on them, but didn't yeah. get them. Um, which means, I guess, it, it was an unconscious fade. Yeah, every time he went, I was like, okay, it seems about right. But I wasn't like, oh, I wanted about to take him. Or I was like, oh, that's a bad pick. Which kind of that eh, seems about right, but. Um, I think it's probably been years of, there were years I was really in on him and he was just kind of okay. Like always a three, eight ERA right. guy. And, uh, I don't know. He was really good last year. He had a one, one, nine, uh, whip last year after being pretty darn bad in 2022. I mean, he was, he was, ERA was over five whip was over one in 2022. I thought maybe that was the end of him being, you know, kind of, uh, kind of usable. And he's been really good last couple of years. Yeah, he was. I, well, I honestly, the, the park changes have changed like Toronto games. It's a good think- point. That place is totally different than it used to be. Yeah, I, I think you, you're not afraid of Toronto pitchers anymore, and you, you're not as afraid of bring, take, having your starters start there anymore if they're on the road there. Uh, it used to be like this launching pad, and now it's not. Yeah. Yeah, this, it affects their offense, obviously, too. I mean, we've seen – we had that huge Vlad home run year, and now it's been not quite the same. And that Vlad home run year was also half – in minor league parks too. Oh, that's play. right. They played in Buffalo and yeah. down in Florida, right? So did they play in Dunedin yeah. for Florida? A while yeah, Dunedin and then Buffalo. Yeah. And both of those yeah. places were very friendly to hit in. So we kind of barely touched a little bit earlier on uh, on Tanner Scott uh, in in Miami. Uh, was really really good last year, but as we talked about in the preseason, it was the first time ever he wasn't a complete walk machine. And you know he was a fourteen percent walk rate in twenty twenty one. 
50, 60% in 2022 last year, 7.8%. Like it was this huge outlier one year. And we were like, you know, is it, did he fix something or was it just kind of a freaky year in 80 innings? Uh, walk rate so far this year is 27.3%. So that's not, not great. Uh, he walked one more guy today. We mentioned you get the three on home run to Azuna. Uh, do you think they make a move here? Are you super worried about Tanner Scott? Cause he was someone that went in the, I don't know, seventh, eighth round and 15 teamers. He was pretty highly drafted. Um, what do you think, uh, what do you think we're looking at with Tanner Scott here as the, as the next uh, month or so goes on? Yeah, well, they've had four, four wins, three wins, and then they blew the save today. So, yeah. I mean, it's hard to kind of look at that, but you know, he, even when he, he got a save, he had three walks uh, against the Yankees. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then he, he's he, had three walks in two different games. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, and then he had the blown save today. Uh, yeah. so yeah, I'm not very optimistic about him. You kind of steered me away from him, actually, with all of our talks. So thank yeah, you. I just thought he went too soon for how that that walk number just stuck out to me. And I hate – we talked about it before. I just can't – closes that walk, guys. I just usually stay away from them. There are some guys who do who do find mixing in some walks and, you know, they strike out so many guys. But and he does that. He strikes a lot of guys. Has not done so far, so far. The swing and strike rate is 6.6% coming today, which is concerning. Again, only what is ever that is seven and two-thirds innings. But – uh I'm worried if they had like a stud next guy up kind of ones that was doing, that was doing well. You mentioned that Nardi has not pitched well. Uh, they have uh, Bender there too. Um, AJ Puck is still six. So Sanchez and yeah, AJ Puck's still starting. Maybe at some point is there is, uh, you know, Edward Cabrera and Braxton Garrett come back. They move someone to the pen maybe, but um, if they had like a stud next guy up that, uh, you know, some of these guys we've talked about when you're picking up in drafts uh, or drafting, uh, maybe they would get the next save, but they don't really have that. It might be the one thing working for us, Tanner Scott right now. Yeah, that's right. Sixto Sanchez has been terrible. I didn't realize how terrible he's been. Uh, in fact, unless he got a strikeout today, he, he's still looking for his first strikeout, which is pretty crazy. But uh, that is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, that that you know, Nardi went my main, and so it, it's going to be one of those where I'm gonna we're all going to look back and laugh after I have cut him and somebody else profits off of him. But <laughs> uh, so we'll see. Tanner Scott was like a league winner last year, though. Scott, 104 oh, Ks, nine wins, 12 he threw, he threw 80 innings. Like, that's a, yeah. that's a big number that he helps great so much toes. with strikeouts. Yeah. 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 Well, since we talked about uh, someone that we uh, th that I faded that is doing well in Jose Altuve, someone that you and I, uh, the only on our target show, the only guys that we both had as our target at the same position was Anthony Volpe in New York. Um, so let's uh, we'll talk about something positive here. Three more hits today uh, has been awesome so far. Uh, hitting 382 as of now, uh, two home runs, five stolen bases. You'd love to see the stolen base number. He stole two yesterday. They were the doubleheader was yesterday. He had two stolen bases. Uh, K rate is cut almost in half at this point. It was 20. It actually is after today. It was 28% last year, 13.6% this year. I think when we talked about it, that was like the one missing thing. It was like, can he, can he cut that? He doesn't hit enough home runs to strike out 28% of the time. He can cut that down to 20%. He can be really interesting really quick. Hard hit rates up. Uh, he has not barreled up many balls, but uh, maybe that's a factor of him trying to be a little different, not going for the home runs like he was last year. So right. what I've seen so far, that there's been some real big changes. And you read some stories that he actually changed a lot of stuff, realized he needed to fix stuff. He was 21 last year playing shortstop for the Yankees. Um, this has been fun. I think at some point he's going to lead off. He has a couple times already this year. Um, Volpe's been awesome so far. He sure has, Scott. Um, so guess how, who doesn't have him in the main event? Uh, this guy, did uh, he go, I mean, it's, it's so hard. Did you have a shortstop? Did he go early? I don't remember. I, oh yeah. I have, I have Lindor. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I, Volpe's average is a little bit higher, but not that much. Just a little bit, just a lot bit. Uh, like Volpe went 275 points. <laughs> oh, Volpe went the seventh round. Uh, and that's the thing because I locked up, you know, shortstop early. I mean, you can right. get him you can get your middle infielder. I mean, in fact, I waited to get a second baseman until 15th, the 15th round. So I, you know, I could have gone with another one there, but, Oh, I only think about that all the times, uh, you know, tout a guy and then don't get him. That's the worst. We talk about it all the time. Yep. And then it just feels so bad when you don't, and it's hard in a fitting team or you just can't draft everybody. It's so, it's so mm -hmm. frustrating. There's a lot of guys I like that. I just didn't get that. You just you can't have everybody, but, um, I took Volpe in my auction and we did in Vegas. So that has, that has been nice. I did not get him in the main event. I had Trey Turner. So kind of same situation as you where I, he went pretty early. I just could, couldn't get in the short something. I was getting a pitcher at that point, but uh, Trey Turner at least had a few hits today, but he's been kind of uh, hit his first home run. So it's been, uh, it's been I, I'm not a good to remember there. last year when Trey Turner struggled early and was just fine at the yeah, end. Well, he kind of was, but he just had that oh, one yeah. like crazy four or five weeks, but yeah. Um, 
I, he's, he's, run, he's running. He's, I think he'll be fine too. He's running a little bit. I, I, I'm not. Uh, I the, the no home runs is kind of frustrating for your first round pick, but you know you have to hit 20 not to hit 45. There's a lot of guys who just hit the, are hitting their first home run. So yeah, I think he'll be fine uh, too. But. Which New York shortstop would you rather have rest of season? Wow, that's a good question. Thank you. I'm gonna take Volpe. I like it. I like it. Swing for the fences. I do think Lador will be fine, though. I think that uh, he's way too good. But like, um, I just I love Volpe. I'm um, looking at Lador. Lador's not striking out at all, which is a good sign. He's at 10. percent mm-hmm. um, He's not hitting anything hard. His hard hit rate's down about eight percent. Barrel rate's down seven percent. Um, and that was up like, the first time ever he had a barrel rate over 10 percent was last year. So maybe. But you kind of hope maybe it is need the high, but maybe a little bit lower. But yeah, it's just he's not, not hitting anything hard so far. He just maybe cold weather. The Mets have had a bunch of rainouts. Maybe I, I think he'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm actually like I have cause for hope in like my main. I mean, my main's doing okay, but I started off Acuna Lindor. Acuna doesn't have any homers. I was gonna say uh, you got one home run between those two guys, and if you're doing all right, that's a pretty good feeling right there. Yeah. Um, and the hitting's fine. I, I think everybody's got problems. I think that's the real thing. And you go, like, there's been all sorts of calamity so far, and that's normal in terms of slow yeah. starts, but also just the injuries have just been uh, voluminous there. So yeah. I, I get it. The fact that you sort of decided between Acuna and Strider and didn't take Strider is kind of a win already right there. It's yeah. kind of, well, that's... Steven Goodwin, team two, took wit over Strider. Uh, oh, wow. so he's the winner right now because Strider went in the second. Uh, if he didn't go first, he went second almost every main that I saw. So that was uh, for ours. that's a good yep. feeling right there. That's, yeah, that's nice. poor Jason Wanick. Uh, got, got his win, his uh, Braves too. He is a Braves fan. He gets Strider at one three. He's like, he's he went brave, brave, brave to start to win Strider, Albies, Harris. Um, and you know, he couldn't have been happier. And then, oh, Strider, that's just brutal. Sucks as baseball fans too. Strider's so fun to watch. Oh, I know. So cool. Uh, anybody else you want to talk about? I think we're uh, I think we're good. Cool. Otherwise, uh, oh, beautiful. J- just remember Patriots Day. Set yeah. that lineup. Set your lineup tonight. Don't wait till tomorrow. I am. Uh, I never set my lineup on Sunday night. I'm going to do it tonight just because it's uh, eight ten. I'm just going to forget by then. I'll do a couple work things. And I'll forget by that point. Yeah. So cool. Well, Jeff, uh, good to see you as always. Uh, always fun to talk, uh, talk, talk some baseball. I look up and it's been an hour and 10 minutes and it flies by pretty well. I want to thank okay. everybody in the chat. A uh, ton of comments. Some people talking to each other. Some people asking questions. Really appreciate that. A lot of people watching. So it's always, uh, always really fun. I think when we do a little bit earlier, it tends to, uh, you know, get the East Coast a little more involved. Um, thanks everybody for listening. I uh, hope everybody has a really good week. Hopefully we get some hitters uh, hitting this week and some pitchers pitching well. Uh, don't forget Patriots Day tomorrow. We'll be back at you next Sunday night. Uh, talk to some more baseball. Everybody have a a really good week and take care.